Using a vector database in Flowwise is one of the most frequently asked questions that I've gotten over the past couple of weeks. And by the end of this video, you will have completely set up an AI agent from start to finish using Flowwise with a vector store implemented so that the AI agent is able to retrieve information from the knowledge base which you provide to it. As you can see, I have built dozens of AI projects for our clients. So when I say that this is the best way to set up a knowledge base in Flowwise, trust me, it is. Now I've opened up an empty Flowwise canvas. If you have never set up Flowwise before, please click on the video shown in the top right here where I show you how to set up and install Flowwise on a server so that you can use it in the way that I'm using it right now. Once you've installed Flowwise, you will be able to click on add new to open up a new chat flow inside of your Flowwise installation. What we're going to do is we're going to click on the plus and we're going to search for agent. We're going to scroll down and we are going to take a tool agent and this agent is what we're going to be using to set up the knowledge base. Now we need to do a couple things such as giving the agent OpenAI access so that it is able to use a tool calling chat model. This is pretty self-explanatory. Simply set up your connect credentials, which is going to be your OpenAI API key, which you can get at platform dot openai.com. If you simply go ahead and visit platform.openai.com slash API dash keys, you will be able to create a new secret key. You will then go ahead, go into Flowwise, select the drop down, select create new, name your credentials the way you want to, insert your OpenAI API key, which you just copied from OpenAI and simply click on save. You can then go ahead and specify your model name. In this case, we are going to do GPT-40. You can set up the temperature and all of this. This is something that you should be familiar with, which controls the randomness of your outputs. There are also additional parameters you can set up, but that's not what this video is about. We're then going to go ahead and give our agents some memory. In this case, we're going to select buffer window memory. We're simply going to drag it in. I like to put the size to 10, which means that we are going to have 10 backs and forths as memory. I'm going to hook this up to the memory. Before we continue with the video, if you're finding value in this content, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It would really help us make more videos like this. And now finally, we are going to be setting up our knowledge base where we are going to select the retriever tool from down here. This is going to allow our agent to retrieve information from a knowledge base, which we are about to set up. So at this stage, we have the retriever tool. We are going to name it. In this case, we're going to keep it very simple. We are going to name the retriever tool FAQs, and we are going to do searches and returns information about Omnifusion AI's services. So we're going to make it all about us in this one. We now have to set up a retriever. And this is where the interesting part comes into play. What we are going to be using is quadrant.tech. It is my personal favorite for setting up vector databases and be able to do vector search at scale. It's affordable, it's easy to use, and I'm gonna be walking through it right now. Once you're in your dashboard in the cluster section, we are simply going to navigate to create. You're only allowed one free cluster in your Quadrant account, but even the paid version comes out to about $30 a month, which is very affordable if you have a paying client. Going back to the free version, simply select your name down here. In this case, I'm gonna call it Omni Fusion. I'm going to go ahead and click on create. And now Quadrant is going to be setting up my cluster. We're going to come back to Quadrant in just a second once it has finished setting up our cluster. In the meantime, we're going to go back into Flowwise. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up the retriever. So we're simply going to go over here. We're going to search for Quadrant and we're going to select the Quadrant under vector stores. We're going to drag it onto our canvas and we're going to hook up the quadrant retriever to the retriever tool. Inside here, we are now have a couple of things that we need to set up from quadrant. So we're going to go back there in just a second. We're going to give our cluster some time to populate. In the meantime, we can hook up our, our documents and our embeddings. Now, when it comes to documents, you can simply go down here and go to document loaders. And you can see that there are a ton of different things you can do, including CSV files, PDF files, JSON files, Notion database, Notion pages, plain text and much more. I usually like to use a docx file. So that's what I'm going to do in this case. I'm simply going to drag this onto here. I'm going to hook up the document with the quadrant node and I am going to 
Now set up a text splitter. A text splitter is going to determine how the document which you upload here is going to be split into smaller chunks and inserted into your vector database for the AI to retrieve. Now what we're going to do is we're simply going to go to text splitter and we're going to select the recursive character text splitter. We're going to drag it onto the canvas and we're going to select this, hook it up to the text splitter. In terms of chunk size and chunk overlap, I would recommend playing around with this a little bit and seeing what gives your AI the best responses. I personally like a thousand to 1.5 and a chunk overlap of between 20 and maybe 80. In this case, I'm just going to go with 20 with a chunk size of a thousand. We are going to get to uploading a doc file in just a second. In the meantime, we just need to go ahead and search for an embeddings, we are going to go ahead and scroll down and we're going to select the OpenAI embeddings node. Here, you simply go to the drop down and select the OpenAI credentials, which you set up earlier down here. You are then going to leave the model name exactly as it is by default, and you're going to hook it up to the embeddings over here. Quick tip for Flowwise, always save your project in between. So in this case, I'm just going to click on save and I'm going to go YouTube tutorial vector database. And we're going to go ahead and save that because there is no auto save on Flowwise. So don't make the mistake of not saving your project. Going back into Quadrant, we can now see that our cluster is active. So we're going to go ahead and click on the cluster right here. Now that we have selected the cluster, all we need to do is first things first, select the endpoint URL. So we're simply going to go ahead and copy that. We're going to go back into Flowwise and we're going to select the Quadrant server URL. We're going to insert that right here. We're now going to input the Quadrant collection name, which is the name of the cluster, which in this case is Omnifusion. So I'm simply going to insert Omnifusion. And now finally, we're going to set up the connect credential. So we're simply going to select the drop down, click on create new, we're going to name it YouTube tutorial test. And now we need to select the API key for this, we're going to go back into quadrant, we're going to go to data access control, you're going to click on create, you're going to select the Omnifusion cluster, which I just created, and you now have the token right here. We're going to take this, we're going to copy it, we're going back into Flowwise, and now we are simply going to paste that into here, the Quadrant API key, and we're going to click on Add. We now have this hooked up, so if we go ahead and save, and we simply go ahead and test our chatbot real quick, we are going to see that it's going to be able to respond. It's going to say, hello, how can I assist you today? We are going to give this tool agent a little bit of a prompt. In my other videos, I've covered prompting much more than in this one. In this case, I'm just going to say use the FAQs tool to answer any questions about Omnifusion AI. Your helpful AI assistant for Omnifusion AI. So now we've prompted it to use the FAQs tool, obviously far from a good prompt but it's going to serve a purpose for this video. We're going to go ahead and go up and now we're going to need to insert a document which we can then add to Quadrant Server. So we're simply going to click on upload file and go ahead and select a docx file which we want to add into our knowledge base. So I'll be right back. As you can see, I have now uploaded a file, the Omnifusion AI knowledge base. I'm simply going to go ahead and click on save and then I'm going to click this green button in the top right corner, which is the upsert to the vector store. I'm simply going to go ahead and click on upsert it's going to load for a second. And as you can see, we have 12 added documents in here right now. And you can see the content of all of the chunks that we have added into the knowledge base. Now, if you want to see the actual knowledge, or if you want to edit the knowledge, which you inserted into quadrant down the line, simply go back to quadrant, go to your clusters, click on the cluster that you just set up, click on open dashboard, when you open the dashboard, you are going to need to insert the API key, which you just set up. So make sure that you save that. You're then going to go ahead and click on apply. And that is going to open this up for you. You can now go ahead and click on the collection that you have. And you can see all the content for all of the chunks in here. So if I would want to edit something, I would simply go ahead and click on edit. And I can edit anything here in this text, save it. And those changes would then reflect. If I want to add an additional document into the vector database, what I would do is in this case, I don't think there's a way to actually clear this file. So I would simply go ahead and delete this file, simply add in an other docx file, drag that in, connect it again, and then you can upload a second document. If you upload the same document twice, you're going to have all chunks duplicated. So I would not recommend doing that. Now, if we go ahead and ask a question and I ask about Omnifusion AI, so I'm going to go, what does Omnifusion AI offer? We are going to be able to see that the agent is going to run 
the tool, the FAQ retriever tool over here, which we have just set up. And as you can see, it gave us a very long response. This is because we didn't really prompt it in a specific way. So it's just going to give us all of these different things. But as you can see, we have this little FAQs tool button right here. So if we click on this, it's actually going to show us that it used the FAQs tool, which is the retriever tool that we set up over here. And you can see that we have a tool output where we had these chunks returned from the retriever tool. Now, if you want to adjust the way that it actually puts out this information, you can go ahead and click on additional parameters for the quadrant node. And here you're going to be able to set up how many different vector chunks you want to receive back from your search. So top K is the number of top results to fetch. The default is set to four. You can set this to one if you want only one chunk. You can set it to two if you want two. You can set it to 10 if you want 10. Personally, I feel like two or the default four is a pretty good spot to be in. And now you have an AI agent set up with your own vector store functioning as a knowledge base where the AI agent can retrieve information from at any time. If you guys found value in this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Join our school community at school.com slash omnifusion for more templates and I hope to see you in the next video.